I'm back for session two. This time, you are going to get the view that I see when I am reading to you. Now, I have two copies of Malleus Maleficarum. This is the stunning copy that I showed you last time. And this is the 400 plus year old copy. And in the background is this painting that I commissioned called Malleus Maleficarum where the judge has a copy of Malleus Maleficarum on the stand. And this is also a first English edition of Malleus Maleficarum. And I want to go to page 13 for our reading today. But you can see, you're seeing everything that I see 1928. I'm going to skip the introduction because I there's some good reading starting on page 13 today. Actually, we'll start on page 11. Okay, here we go. Okay. The answer to the fourth objection, the work of God can be destroyed by the work of the devil in accordance with what we are now saying with reference to the power of the effects of witchcraft. But since this can only be by the permission of God, it does not at all follow that the devil is stronger than God. Again, if he cannot use so much violence as he wishes to harm the works of God, because if he were unrestricted, he would utterly destroy all the works of God. The answer to the fifth objection may be clearly stated thus. The planets and stars have no power to coerce or compel devils to perform any actions against their will, although seemingly demons are readier to appear when summoned by magicians under the influence of certain stars. It appears that they do this for two reasons. First, because they know that the power of the planet will aid the effect which the magicians desire. Secondly, they do this in order to deceive men, thus making them suppose that the stars have some divine power or actual divinity. And we know that in the days of old, this veneration of the stars led to the vilest idolatry. With reference to the last objection, which is founded upon the argument that gold is made by alchemists, we may put forward the opinion of St. Thomas when he discusses the power of the devil and how he works. Although certain forms having a substance may be brought about by art and the power of natural agent, as for example, the form of fire is brought about by art employed on wood. Nevertheless, this cannot be done universally because art cannot always either find or yet mix together the proper agents in the proper proportions, and yet it can produce something similar. And thus alchemists make something similar to gold, that is to say, insofar as the external accidents are concerned, but nevertheless they do not make true gold, because the substance of gold is formed by the heat of fire which alchemists employ, but by the heat of the sun acting and reacting upon a certain spot where mineral power is concentrated and amassed, and therefore such gold is of the same likeness as, but is not of the same species as natural gold, and the same argument applies to all other operations. This then is our proposition. Devils by their art do bring about evil effects through witchcraft. Yet it is true that without the assistance of some agent, they cannot make any form either substantial or accidental, and we do not maintain that they can inflict damage without the insistence, uh, assistance of some agent. But with such an agent, diseases and any other human passions or ailments can be brought about, and these are real and true. How these agents or how the employment of such means can be rendered effective in cooperation with devils will be made clear in the following chapters. Okay, let's read a little more. 
Question two. If it be in accordance with the Catholic faith to maintain that in order to bring about some effect of magic, the devil must intimately cooperate with the witch, or whether one without the other, that is to say the devil without the witch, or conversely, could produce such an effect. And the first argument is this, that the devil can bring about an effect of magic without the cooperation of any witch, so St. Augustine holds. All things which visibly happen, so they can be seen, may, it is believed, be the work of inferior powers of the air. But bodily ills and ailments are certainly not invincible. Nay, rather, they are evident to the senses. Therefore, they can be brought about by devils. Moreover, we learn from the Holy Scriptures of the disasters which fell upon Job, how fire fell from heaven, striking the sheep and the servants consume, and the servants consumed them, and how a violent wind threw down the four corners of a house, so it fell upon his children and slew them all. The devil by himself, without the cooperation of any witches, but merely by God's permission alone, was able to bring about all these disasters. Therefore, he can certainly do many things which are often ascribed to the work of witches. And this is obvious from the account of the seven husbands of the maiden Sarah, whom a devil killed. Moreover, whatever a superior power is able to do, it is able to do without reference to a power superior to it. And a superior power can all the more work without reference to an inferior power. But an inferior power can cause hailstorms and bring about diseases without the help of the power of a greater than itself. For blessed Albertus Magnus in his work, De Passionibus Eris, says that rotten sage, if used, as he explains, and thrown into running water, will arouse most fearful tempest and storms. Moreover, it is said that the devil makes use of a witch, not because he has need of any such agent, but because he is seeking the perdition of the witch. We may refer to what Aristotle says in the third book of his Ethics. Evil is a voluntary act, which is proved by the fact that nobody performs an unjust just act merely for the sake of doing an unjust action. And a man who commits a rape does this for the sake of pleasure, not merely doing evil for evil's sake. Yet the law punishes those who have done evil as they had acted merely for the sake of doing evil. Therefore, if a devil works by means of a witch, he is merely employing an instrument. And since an instrument depends on the will of the person who employs it and does not act of its own free will, therefore the guilt of the action ought not to be laid to the charge of the witch. And in consequence, should... Okay, skipping over a few chapters to page 13... And so women, in order to bring about changes in the bodies of others, sometimes make use of certain things which exceed our knowledge. But this is without any aid from the devil. And because these remedies are mysterious, we must not therefore ascribe them to the power of the devil as we should ascribe evil spells wrought by witches. Moreover, witches use certain images and other strange periaps which they are wont to place under the lintels of the doors of houses, or in those meadows where flocks or herdings, or even where men congregate, and thus they cast spells over their victims, who have oftentimes been known to die. But because such extraordinary effects can proceed from these images, it would appear that the influence of these images is in the proportion to the influence of the stars over human bodies, For as natural bodies are influenced by heavenly bodies, so may artificial bodies likewise be thus influenced. But natural bodies may find the benefit of certain secret but good influences. Therefore, artificial bodies may receive such influence. Hence, it is plain that those who perform works of healing may well perform them by means of such good influences and this has no connection at all with any evil power. Moreover, it would seem that most extraordinary and miraculous events come to pass by the working of the powers of nature. For wonderful and terrible and amazing things happen according to natural forces, 
And this, St. Gregory points out in the second dialogue, the saints perform miracles. Sometimes by prayer, sometimes by their power alone. There are examples of each. St. Peter, by praying, raised to life Tabitha, who was dead. By rebuking Ananias and Sapphira, who were telling a lie, he slew them without any prayer. Therefore, a man, by his mental influence, can change a material body into another. Or he can change such a body from health to sickness, and conversely. Now, let's go down to... But certain objections must be allowed. The influence of the mind cannot make an impression upon any form except by the intervention of some agent, as we have said above. And these are the words of St. Augustine in the book, which we have already quoted. It is incredible that the angels who fell from heaven should be obedient to any material things, for they obey God only, and much less can man of his natural power bring about extraordinary and evil effects. The answer must be made. There are even today many who err greatly on this point, making excuses for witches and laying the whole blame upon the craft of the devil or ascribing the changes that they work to some natural alteration. Now let's go. These errors may be easily made clear. First, by the description of witches, which St. Isidore gives in his etymology. Witches are so-called on account of the blackness of their guilt. That is to say, their deeds are more evil than those of any other malefactors. He continues, they stir up and confound the elements by the aid of the devil and arouse terrible hailstorms and tempests. Moreover, he says, they distract the minds of men, driving them to madness, insane hatred, and inordinate lust. Again, he continues, by the terrible influence of their spells alone, as it were by a draught of poison. They can destroy life. And the words of St. Augustine in his book, The City of God, are very much to the point. For he tells us who magicians and witches really are. Magicians who are commonly called witches, are thus termed on account of the magnitude of their evil deeds. These are they who, by the permission of God, disturb the elements, who drive to the distraction the minds of men. Such have lost their trust in God, and by the terrible power of the evil spells, without any actual draught or poison, kill human beings. As Lucan says, a mind which has not been corrupted by any noxious drink perishes, for spoken by some evil charm. For having summoned devils to their aid, they actually dare to heap harms upon mankind and even destroy their enemies by their evil spells. And it is certain that in operations of this kind, the witch works in close conjunction with the devil. Secondly, punishments are of four kinds, beneficial, hurtful, wrought by witchcraft, and natural. Beneficial punishments are meted out by the ministry of good. Angels, just as hurtful punishments, proceed from evil spirits. Moses smote Egypt with ten plagues by ministry of good angels, and magicians were able to perform three of these miracles by the aid of the devil. And the pestilence which fell on people for three days because of the sin of David, who numbered the people and the 72,000 men who were slain in one night in the army of Senator Sennacherib, were miracles wrought by the angels of God, that is, by good angels who feared God and knew that they were carrying out his commands. Destructive harm, however, is wrought by the medium of bad angels, at whose hands the children of Israel in the desert were often afflicted, and whose harms, which are simply evil and nothing more, are brought about by the devil, who works through the medium of sorcerers and witches, there are also natural harms which come, which in some manner depend upon the conjunction of heavenly bodies such as dearth, draught, tempest, and similar effects by nature. Okay, that was a bit of an experiment to see what you think. Uh, let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll try to find some way to make it so I don't... The, the screen doesn't move so much, but 
that was just another way of sharing this um, reading of Malleus Maleficarum with you, letting you see exactly as I see it as I'm reading it. So um, that's wrapping up session two. I'll be back for three in a couple days.